Hello, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on deep learning. Till our previous class, we have talked about the backpropagation learning and uh, we have seen that how the backpropagation learning is uh, actually implemented or takes place in a feed forward neural network at the network level and also how the gradient is back propagated within a particular node or different layers or different circuits within a particular node. And as we said in the previous class, now onwards I will assume that you know back propagation learning and when, whenever the learning is uh, discussed, I will simply refer to that back propagation learning algorithm is used. I will not go into details of the learning algorithm until and unless some details is essential. So, in today's discussion, we are going to start to discuss on autoencoders. So, today and subsequent few lectures, we will talk about under complete autoencoder. We will try to find out what is the relationship between an autoencoder and uh, principal component analysis or PCA. Maybe I will discuss something about PCA for those of you who are not aware of this. We will talk about the other variants of the autoencoder, namely sparse autoencoder, denoising autoencoder, contractive autoencoder and so on. And then we will also talk about convolution autoencoder, but not as a continuation of this uh, uh, series on autoencoders, but we will come back to convolution autoencoder after we discuss about convolution and convolution neural network. So, today what we are going to talk about the autoencoder and under complete autoencoder. Now, what is this autoencoder? As the name suggests that autoencoder is nothing but an algorithm that codes itself or that encodes itself. So, you can say that autoencoder is an unsupervised learning algorithm, where the neural networks are subject to the task of representation learning. And what is this representation? The representation is nothing but how you code or how you encode the input data that is fed to the network. And learning this representation, learning this code is what is known as representation learning. And we say autoencoders are unsupervised learning because when you train an autoencoder for coding an input or for uh, encoding an input, we do not use data which are level data unlike in case of classification problems that we have discussed earlier. So, if you remember what we discussed in case of classification that for training the network or for training of your classification algorithm, machine learning algorithm, we need a lot of training data. And what that set of training data tells you is that it tells you that what is the class belongingness of a particular training data. And it is only from that information of class belongingness, I can compute the error. Because if my machine says that a training data or if my machine infers that a training data belongs to some category say 5, whereas the ground truth says that that particular training data belongs to uh, category 1. So, there is a mismatch. My machine says it is category 5, whereas the ground truth is category 1. So, there is an error and your learning algorithm as we said using back propagation tries to minimize this error. That means, as the machine has interpreted to be 5, what modifications or what updations in the weight vectors we have to do. So, that the machine really interprets this data to belong to category 1. So, those are the supervised learning algorithms because the data that you use for training or learning are the labeled data. But in case of autoencoder, the data that we use are not labeled data. However, we still have back propagation algorithm because we want that 
whichever way the machine represents or the auto encoder represents the input data from that representation it is possible it should be possible that we should be able to reconstruct the input data that means i have to find out that after encoding whether the encoded data can be reconstructed so if for encoding i call it a forward uh, encoding algorithm so some mapping function f that gives me the encoded data then another mapping function g should be able to convert or transform that encoded data to my original input and for learning what you do is you compare the original input and this reconstructed input and try to minimize the error between these two so this auto encoder as we said that it is an unsupervised learning and the task of the neural network in this case is to go for representation learning or try to encode or learn how to encode or how to code the input data and in order to do this what you do is you introduce a bottleneck in the network because as we said that our learning algorithm will be that i have an input i have some coding in between then i have a reconstructed output and i want that the reconstructed output should be similar to the input or they should be identically possible so there is a possibility that the network may eventually learn an identity mapping okay so if the network learns an identity mapping it does not learn it does not really learn the representation so in order to enforce or in order to force that the network learns the representation or network learns what is the inner structure of the data it is necessary that in the network you impose a bottleneck uh, layer we'll come to uh, a bit later details of how this is done and this bottleneck actually forces a compressed knowledge representation of the input that means if my input vector input data is of dimension say d in this compressed knowledge representation it will be mapped to a vector of dimension say m where m is much much less than d so how it is done we'll come to this a bit later uh, so for this we have certain assumptions the assumption is there is a high degree of correlation or structure that exists in the data if the components of the input data are not correlated that means if the features are independent of one another then this compressed domain representation and subsequent reconstruction of the original input will be difficult in fact it may not be possible at all so when the neural network goes for representation learning or tries for representation of the input data in compressed domain what it tries to do is it removes the correlation or the redundancy present in the data and what is what it preserves is only the uncorrelated part and from this uncorrelated part then it should be subsequently possible to reconstruct the original input data so that is what an auto encoder is and as we said that the name auto encoder in indicates that it encodes the data or it codes the data on its own and this is an unsupervised learning because for training an auto encoder we don't use any label data what we want is whatever is fed to the input the auto encoder outputs the same thing so for this i need two different functions one is the encoding part one is the decoding part so the encoding part will encode the input data to an uh, compressed domain representation knowledge representation and the decoder part will decode the data from that compressed representation from the uh, encoded output to your original input uh, original input so if my input was x it will reconstruct x hat i want that x and x hat should be similar or the error between x and x hat should be minimum and that is what is given by the decoder part so i should have an encoder half i should also have a decoder half and this is the structure the uh, base structure of an auto encoder so you find that in this auto encoder i have an input layer this is the input layer 
and I have a hidden layer and I have an output layer. So, this hidden layer is actually the bottleneck layer. So, in the bottleneck layer, what you are doing is you are compressing the data. You are going for compressed domain representation. So, you find that the number of nodes in the hidden layer or the number of nodes in the bottleneck layer is much less than the number of nodes in the input layer. And also you find that the number of nodes in the input layer is same as the number of nodes in the output layer. Because finally, at the output, I want that whatever was the compressed domain representation in the hidden layer, from this compressed domain representation, it should be possible to reconstruct my original input. So, original input was x, I should be able to reconstruct this x, which is x at. So, obviously, the dimensionality of x and the dimensionality of x hat should be same. So, what does it mean? Say for example, I use this network for compressed domain representation of an input image. And suppose image is of size m by n. So, there are m into n number of pixels. So, as we said before, that by column concatenation, this m by n matrix can be represented by an one dimensional vector use having m into n number of elements that we have to do by column concatenation. So, if each of the n, each pixel is uh, fed to one of the nodes on the input layer. So, the number of nodes in the input layer has to be m into n because every node input in the input layer gets one pixel. In addition, we have to have one more node to represent the bias. So, the number of nodes in the input layer has to be m into n plus 1. Whereas, on the reconstruction side, I do not need any bias. I just want my x back. So, that is what I need an x hat. So, the number of nodes in the output layer has to be m into n as against m into n plus 1 on the input side. Now, suppose I want that this entire image should be represented by a d dimensional vector or a vector having d number of components where d is much less than m into n. So, in that case, the number of nodes in the hidden layer has to be equal to d, which is my bottleneck layer. But the reconstruction purpose, I need one more additional node to take care of the bus. So, the number of nodes in the hidden layer for the decoding side or for the reconstruction side will be m into n plus 1. So, this is the base architecture of an auto encoder. Now, you find that, so I have an input layer, I have an output layer, I have a hidden layer or a bottleneck layer. Now, this same architecture now onwards for simplicity, I will represent like this, that input layer will be an array of nodes, hidden layer will be another array of nodes, where array, of, array size in the hidden layer will usually be less than the array size in the input layer. Similarly, on the output side also I will have an array of nodes and I will have a set of weights say w1 and w1 dash. So, this w1 connects the input layer to the hidden layer and w1 dash connects from the hidden layer to the output layer. Right. It is also possible that instead of having just one hidden layer, I can have uh, multiple hidden layers. Now, before that, this side when you are going from input to the hidden layer, the hidden layer actually gives you the encoded uh, information in a lower dimension in general. Later on, when we talk about um, sparsity or sparse autoencoder, we will see that it is not necessary that I will have to go for dimensionality reduction. I can have a dimension exposure as well or maybe of the same dimension, but there your uh, compressed representation is done 
by some other mechanism. However, for the time being, let us assume that we are going for compressed domain representation, knowledge representation. So, from input to the reduced dimensional representation, that is a part which is the encoding part. So, this is the encoder side. So, this is what is your encoder. And similarly, from compressed domain representation to the reconstruction of the original signal, this is what is the decoder part. So, I have an encoder, I also have a decoder. It is also possible that I may not have only one hidden layer or only one bottleneck layer. I can have multiple number of hidden layers. So, I can have a situation something like this. So, on the encoder side, I have a number of hidden layers. On the decoder side, also I will have a number of hidden layers. I will come back to this one a bit later. Now, in this case, as we said that uh, when I have an auto encoder, what I have is I have input data and output of the auto encoder is also a data and I want that the output should be a faithful reconstruction of the input. And while doing so, the information passes through the bottleneck layer, where in the bottleneck layer, I have a compressed domain representation or coded version of the input data. Now, I, my expectation from such an auto encoder is twofold. Firstly, I want that the auto encoder should be sensitive enough to the input for accurate reconstruction. Because wh what we said is my reconstructed uh, vector x hat should be as close as possible to input x. So, that means my auto encoder should be accurately should be able to accurately reconstruct my input signal. So, that is what is it is sensitive enough to input for accurate reconstruction. Now, if accurate reconstruction is my aim not the representation then an identity function is sufficient. So, it might be possible that auto encoder simply learns the identity function. So, if it simply learns the identity mapping it will always reconstruct your output faithfully as the input. But that is not our aim. Our aim is actually what is happening at the bottle la uh, bottleneck layer. That is how the input data is represented in, in the compressed domain. That is what is my interest. And this encoded data will be useful for some later applications. Because I have the original, if my reconstruction is the, is the only aim, why do I need it? I have the original. Why do I why do I have to go to the bottleneck and then a reconstruction. So, the other expectation from an auto encoder is it should be insensitive enough that it does not memorize or overfit the training data. That means, it does not learn the identity function. So, I have two conflicting requirements or two conflicting expectations from an auto encoder that it should be sensitive and at the same time it should not be sensitive enough. So, how do you impose or how do you try to satisfy both these requirements, both these conflicting requirements simultaneously. So, that is actually done by designing your loss function which takes care of both of them. And this loss function as we said that the loss function will be used for back propagation learning algorithm when you train the auto encoder. So, the loss function in this case will be given by uh, this that this loss function will have two components. One is L x x hat which is the error between the input x and the reconstructed x hat. So, if I want to minimize this, so minimization of this the error takes care of this that the autoencoder is sensitive for faithful reconstruction of the input. Whereas, the second requirement which conflicts the previous requirement is through a regularizer term, a regularizer term. So, in the loss function you have an error function between x and x hat and you also have a regularizer term. So, the regularizer term will try to make it insensitive 
to the input and it will force the autoencoder to learn the low dimensional representation where it learns the salient features of the input. So that using the salient features, the decoder will be able to reconstruct the data. So it does not simply learn the identity function. So both these uh, requirements, uh, conflicting requirements are made are uh, satisfied by defining a loss function on this form. So this is what I said that uh, the way a variant of the autoencoder which is known as under complete autoencoder uh, takes care of the regularization is by introducing uh, or by introducing restriction on the number of nodes in the hidden layer or the bottle lake, bottleneck layer. So, as we said usually number of nodes in the bottleneck layer or the hidden layer is much less than the number of nodes in the input layer or similarly the number of nodes in the output layer. So, in such cases uh, the network is made insensitive to the input by restricted number of nodes in the hidden layer. And when I have an architecture of this form, this is what is known as an under complete autoencoder architecture. And for training such an autoencoder, you simply minimize the loss function, which is given by L x x hat, which is half of x minus x hat, take the L2 norm of that, and sum of this over all the training vectors. Okay. And you find that here, as we said, that this is an unsupervised learning because I do not need to have a knowledge of the class belongingness of the input vector x. What I simply only need is that the x and x hat should be similar, that is, x hat should be a faithful reconstruction of my input x. So, this is what is my under complete autoencoder. Now, as we said before, that it is not necessary that uh, the autoencoder have to have only one hidden layer or uh, the bottleneck layer. I can have an stacked autoencoder where a number of hidden layers are stacked one after another. So, this diagram shows that I have a stacked autoencoder where obviously x is uh, fed to the input layer. I have the first uh, hidden layer in the autoencoder on the encoding side, the connection weights between the input layer and the first hidden layer autoencoder layer is given by the weight vectors or weight matrix W1. Then I have the second hidden layer and in this case the second hidden layer happens to be the bottle neck layer and the connection weights between the first autoencoding layer to the second hidden layer, the second autoencoding layer is the set of connection weights W. So, this completes my encoding part. Then on the decoder side, from the encoded data, it goes to the first hidden layer on the decoding side and the connection weights from this to this is given by W2 dash and similarly from this hidden layer to the output layer, the connection weight is given by W1 dash. And what I simply want is that the x hat should be a faithful reconstruction of x that is the input data. And for that, the loss function that we have to minimize is the uh, L2 norm between x and x hat. And this has to be summed over all the training data and you minimize this L2 norm using backpropagation learning algorithm. And while this is minimized, you find that these weights W1, W2, similarly W2 dash and W2, W1 dash, they will be modified, they will be updated until and unless the L2 norm or the error between X and X hat is 0 or it is 
within an acceptable limit. At that point, we say that my auto encoder is properly trained. Now, what you do after the auto encoder is properly trained? I said earlier that reconstruction is not my aim. I want to reconstruction, I want to reconstruct the input data from the encoded data just to ensure that my encoding is proper. That is whatever my, is my encoded data, from the encoded data I should be able to reconstruct my encoding, input data, which ensures that in the process of encoding I have not lost any information. But this decoding part or the reconstruction part is not the one that I am interested in. What I am interested in is simply this encoding part. My interest is up to this. So, for subsequent applications, if I want to apply this even for classification purpose, what I can do is after this auto encoder is trained, that means my encoding part is proper, I can simply forget about this part of the network. You simply cut it off, you feed your input, I have the encoded output and feed this encoded output to your other application modules. This is what is my aim. My aim is not the decoding. Decoding is only a help to ensure that my encoder is working properly. So, this is what uh, the auto encoder will do and for this again we said that what we want is um, uh, that auto encoder will be trained using the back propagation learning and for during this back propagation learning we will make use of the errors or the gradient of the error that you get at the output layer between the input and the reconstructed output. And based on that you modify all the connection weights so that your encoder is properly trained. So, we will stop here today, we will continue with our discussions on autoencoders in subsequent lectures. Thank you.